Greetings, Basketeers. Josh Fosgreen here with Double Thumb Bass Groove Numero Dos in our ongoing effort to explore some of the different possibilities that uh, you can get out of the double thumb technique. We've talked about how to do the technique in the past, so we'll just assume that you've got the basic idea. Now we're just working on applications for the technique. Um, so as you heard in the intro, uh, we kind of got two versions of this groove today. Just got a simpler version where there's just a consistent down up double thumb pulse with the right hand. And then we've got a little fancier version with a, with a hammer on added in there to get the uh, triplet going. Um, so to follow along for either version, you'll need to download the free PDF, which you can get by clicking on this link. That'll take you to my website, then you can get the PDF directly. You can just view it in your browser or you can download it, whatever you want to do. Uh, and that's got sheet music and tablature for everything we're going to do today. And it is free and you don't have to give me your social security number or your credit card information. So uh, version number one of this groove. First of all, we're in the key of C minor. And basically what we're dealing with note wise is these one, five, nine chords. The first bar is just C, G, D, G. The chord symbol I've used to notate those is uh, C5 add nine because this is not a C9 chord or a C major nine chord or a C minor nine chord because it doesn't have a third or a seventh in it. It's just a root, a fifth and a ninth which is just the second up an octave. Uh, so the chord symbol I typically use to write those is uh, five add nine, which is just a power chord with a ninth on it. And this is a great chord on bass. I love this chord. Um, as you can see, since there's no third in it, it doesn't define minor or major, but based on the root movement in this progression, we can see that it's in the key of C minor basically because we've got C five add nine to E flat five add nine, E flat major would be the three chord in the key of C minor. Then we go to A flat, five add nine later. And then on the G chord, we just walk down the C minor scale. So it's pretty obviously in C minor, even though there's technically not actually any minor chords in the progression. Uh, if there were a guitar or a keyboard or something in the mix, they would probably play some minor thirds, but uh, that's not happening. So that's the analysis. C minor, one, five, nine chords. It's a cool shape to use. So as you can see, it's a pretty big stretch, even for my big hands. So what you probably want to do to fret it, just kind of go first finger, second finger, fourth finger, and just kind of let your hand wiggle through the position rather than trying to do this. Of course, you'd have to do that if you really wanted all the notes to be ringing as a chord. But since that doesn't really matter for this line, just let your hand roll through the position like this. And again, I'm going first finger, second finger, fourth finger. And then probably something like third finger, first finger, fourth finger, third finger for that run down at the end. And then the right hand, it's just thumb down, thumb up all the way through. Down, up, down, up. So it's really just a just a string crossing exercise with the right hand, A string, D string, G string, D string, A, D, G, D. So it uh, helps develop a little bit of accuracy with your right hand if you're only used to thumbing on one string. This is a great thing to do with your normal thumb technique too, just to do string crossing stuff like that and just build up your accuracy. You can do the same thing with the double thumb. Just pick a pattern of strings to do and, and uh, come up with a string crossing exercise. So this tune is a lot like a string crossing exercise because we're just wiggling back and forth between those higher three strings. And that's it. So uh, let's try playing along with that here at the uh, same tempo the intro was at. One, two, three, four. The last tidbit I'll throw in there before we move on to the advanced version 
First of all, if that play along is too fast, just turn on your own metronome at a slower tempo. That's at 90 BPM, so try it at maybe 60 or 70 and just... However slow you need to go and then work it up gradually while maintaining good technique and everything. Uh, the last tip that I'll throw in before we move on to the advanced version is uh, one thing you can do to make this groove uh, a little better, in my opinion, is to is to hit a little uh, extra hard on what I would call the back beats, which are beats two and four. This is typically where you hear a snare drum hit. Kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare. So you can hear even, even more so without the drums going. If I do that, if I don't do that, It sounds very like kind of even and you can't really tell exactly where where you are in the bar necessarily. But if you um, if you put a little emphasis on beats two and four, I'm kind of emphasizing it a little extra here just to demonstrate, but you can hear that it gives a little bit of rhythmic shape to the line and kind of helps the listener uh, perceive kind of a drum groove feeling, you know, even if for some reason you don't have a drummer, like for the reason that you want to do a solo bass thing. So that's a really good thing to keep in mind in general with the slap technique is trying to keep that drum groove feeling in the bass part itself. Um, obviously, you know, you kind of do different amounts of that depending on if you actually have a drummer or not. Um, but for me, that just helps make it groove and it feels good to me to do it, even if there is a drummer playing a snare drum on those beats. Um, just I just like the feel of it, and it's something I notice a lot of other bass players doing as well. And it's one of those subtleties that maybe you don't pick up if you've only been playing for a short amount of time. Uh, but now that I've said it, you'll probably notice it more and uh, you can play with putting it in your own playing. All right, on to the advanced version. This is the same line, same notes, everything the same basically, except that we're throwing a little hammer on in between our thumb down and our thumb up, which turns it into a triplet pattern. And of course, uh, we're stealing this pattern from Victor Wooten because why not steal what you can? So uh, in Victor Wooten's classical thump, third time around, that pattern, thumb down, hammer, thumb up is exactly what we're doing here. So what happens is I thumb down, this is still just basic double thumb technique, thumb down on a muted A string, then I hammer on the note that I actually want to play, which is the C to start with, and then I come up on it. So I'm doing muted A string with the thumb down, hammer on the C, thumb up on the C. Play with that and see how fast you can get comfortable with that pattern and you can do that without notes too you just do like the uh, string crossing we were talking about earlier just go thumb down left hand slap or hammer on thumb up just kind of get accustomed to that and work up the speed over time you're not going to get it that fast on your first day but you can get it that fast if you just plug away at it for a while. So the part of this that's a little bit magical is if I play this for you really slowly. It's very obvious to your ear that beats one, two, three, and four are just muted strings and the actual notes we're aiming for are coming in on the second and third triplet notes of each beat, which you would think wouldn't really work because normally <laughs> bass lines should hit on the beat somewhere in the bar, and in this case, we're not hitting any, any notes that we're playing on the beat. But what your ear does, if I play it at a faster tempo, is your ear moves those notes over so it sort of sounds like they're on the beat. So if I play that at speed, or a little faster, it sounds like I'm just playing three notes on, uh, three of each note that I'm playing. 
like I might if I did like thumb down, thumb up, pluck. So here, with this other pattern I'm doing here, thumb down, thumb up, pluck. I actually am playing each note three times, but if I go back to the pattern we're using here, thumb down, hammer, thumb up. There's really only a very subtle difference that your ear can pick up at tempo. I'll switch back to the other pattern. So that's a, a pretty cool little trick. Um, just like other things that you can trick human ears with, like uh, James Jamerson, who played on a lot of great Motown records, was um, noted for you know throwing like open E and A strings into a tune that was in A flat or D flat or something. But because it bounced right into a note that was in the scale, the human ear is very forgiving. In this case, we're seeing a rhythmic version of that. Um, taking notes, you know, the notes that are supposed to be in the bass line, scooting them all over to fit an extra note in so we sound cool. And as the music goes by, the human ear just corrects it so it sounds like the bass line uh, is relatively unsyncopated. So pretty cool little effect. Um, I'm, always, I'm always amazed by that that, um, that that works. And you can do, do a lot of different applications of that. I mean, I could even not mute those strings and just give you straight straight open string. You know, and in this case I'm playing an open A in the key of C minor, which isn't horribly dissonant, it's just a major six, but it doesn't really fit with the sound of this line because I'm playing like C, E flat, A flat, G, so an A natural is not really in the harmonic vocabulary of this tune, but if I go... You're not really hearing that A. So anyway, enough of that. I'm just endlessly fascinated by it. Um, so to play the fast version, you're just going to have to take it slow. And you can do open strings on the thumb down, or you can do muted strings. kind of play with different degrees of muted or open on those initial thumb downs to get different um, different amounts of open or closedness in the line. You could give it a little bit of shape over the course of a song or something like that. Let's try a play along on the advanced version. If this is too fast for you, then of course do what I always tell you to do, which is use your own metronome, start at whatever speed you need to. And then you can use the play along. Here we go, one, two, three, four. Last little thing I'll throw in here before we wrap up for the day is um, there's also a weird rhythmic thing happening when you do the triplet version of the line because the drums that are programmed here is just a straight 16th line. So you're playing triplets over 16th notes in the drum part creates a little bit of a polyrhythmic weirdness, uh, which I just decided to go with because weirdness is good. So this is double thumb bass groove number two. You've got an easier version and a more advanced version. Uh, you can play with switching back and forth. Uh, you know, you don't always want to throw as many notes as possible into a bass line. But since this is just an A tune to practice your double thumb technique, I think we're allowed to play a few extra notes. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. It's so fun playing bass and making videos for you, and I'm glad you guys dig them. Please um, keep your comments coming, and uh, be sure to share these videos with your friends, and click like, and subscribe if you'd like to see more of them, and do all the other things that every YouTube channel tells you to do. I'd like to remind you guys that I'm working on a new book. It's a beginning to intermediate scales and arpeggios, and you know what? Advanced people can check it out too, but it's really uh, open to beginners, unlike the other books I've put out so far. Uh, it'll be out sometime this year. It finally got into a full rough draft form recently, so that's been really fun, and I'm really looking forward to that coming out, so keep your eyes peeled. In the meantime, Beastly Scales and Arpeggios is still available, and uh, if you're interested in taking some private bass lessons with me, I do have some slots open uh, for Skype students around the world, so if you're interested in that, you can uh, just check out the lessons page on my website. Thank you guys for watching, I really appreciate it. In the words of Bill and Ted, be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes.